we're looking at the question of the historical accuracy of the Bible, and specifically the Old Testament. And if you remember, in my last video, I answered the question, is what we have written now in the scriptures what was originally recorded? And in this video, I'm going to be answering the question, does the archaeological evidence confirm or deny what scripture ex itself claims? Let's talk about Jericho. According to the Bible, Jericho was a strategically placed, impressive walled city, a fortress city. Its destruction was the Israelites' first major military victory upon entering the Promised Land, and as anyone familiar with the story will tell you, its walls came a-tumbling down. Now, according to the chronology widely accepted by archaeologists and scholars, the conventional chronology, the Israelite annihilation of Jericho should have taken place at the end of the Late Bronze Age. The problem is that, at that time, the Late Bronze Age, Professor Kenyon's archaeological research has demonstrated that at the known location of Jericho, a place called Tel Es Sultan, there was no walled city in existence. In fact, the only settlement on that site was a small village. Ouch. Now, the usual response from Christians has been a threefold argument. Answering the question, why could Kenyon find next to no evidence of this great walled city? They have argued first that according to Joshua 6, 19-21, the Israelites plundered the city of all its durable waste, that is, treasures that would stand the test of time, and they completely destroyed everything else. Second, the destruction of the walls detailed in the Bible is so complete that no evidence or very little evidence of them would have remained. And on top of that, third, five centuries of exposure to the elements before Jericho's eventual rebuilding would have obliterated any remains. As Edwards has said, for durable rubbish to be preserved, it would be essential that successive towns should be built on top of it. This did not happen at Jericho. Now, that's a pretty fair and possible answer to the question. But since Kenyon's findings, new research has come to light which, if proved correct, resurrects the biblical story of Jericho from its mythological tomb. Archaeologist David Roll, uh, incidentally he's not a Christian so he doesn't have a Christian axe to grind, uh, with the publication of his book A Test of Time in 1995, cast doubt on the accuracy of the accepted conventional chronology. Roll argued that it may be out by as much as 346 years. Consequently, uh, archaeologists need to look for evidence of Jericho at Tel Es Sultan not in the Late Bronze Age, but in the Mid Bronze Age. And in the Mid Bronze Age, we discover something very interesting. In Professor Kenyon's dig for the Mid Bronze Age, she discovered four significant things. First, the remains of a great city wall which appeared to have collapsed outwards into a defensive ditch. As Roll states, the walls of mid-Bronze Age Jericho had indeed tumbled down, thus affording any attacker easy access into the city by filling up the ditch which protected the base of Jericho's elaborate defensive system. Second, evidence within those collapsed walls pointed to a great conflagration, a fire. In some places the ash and debris was a metre in depth. Among the details mentioned in scripture is the fact that the Israelites burned the city and everything inside it. Third, the Bible also mentions that the battle took place during the harvest season. Now, archaeological evidence uncovered by Kenyon for the Mid-Bronze Age also included the discovery of large storage jars filled with carbonized grain. Fourth, Kenyon also uncovered evidence in the form of mass graves that prior to its destruction, the inhabitants may have been struck by a plague. Now, prior to their assault on Jericho, the Israelites also suffered from a plague, and Roll speculates, it is just possible that the plague may have been brought into Jericho by Joshua's spies. Archaeologist Piotr Binkowski sums up 
Kenyon's findings. He says this, Jericho was destroyed at the end of the Mid-Bronze Age, probably by enemy action and possibly through a failure of the fortification system. Perhaps there was a fatal flaw in the design of the fortifications. And he goes on, the reason for this, the destruction of Jericho is unknown. Now, it's worth noting, and it's fair to point out, that Bienkowski was writing prior to Roll's findings, when the Israelites were thought not to have been on the scene. Without Roll's research, we have to conclude that Jericho was indeed destroyed in the exact way the Bible describes, but by a completely unknown and undocumented assailant, someone unknown to history. It seems to me that Roll's research and the historical documentation of scripture provide the reason that Bienkowski was, a, was at a complete loss to explain. But the ramifications of Roll's research do not end with Jericho. As a direct result of his redating of the chronology, other biblical figures previously thought to have been mythological simply because archaeologists have uncovered no evidence of them, are suddenly transported into the pages of history. Incidentally, absence of evidence does not prove evidence of non-existence. But, as I said, people are suddenly transported into the pages of history. People like Joshua, uh, Moses, Saul, David and Solomon. Now. The jury is still out on Roll's research, but it's worth pointing out that his discoveries, by the very nature, present a direct challenge to the conventional assumptions of archaeology. If he is right, the conclusions of many of his teachers are wrong, and much of their scholarship will have been rendered redundant. A sizable chunk of ancient history will have to be rewritten. Perhaps for this reason, or these reasons, academia has found his conclusions a very hard pill indeed to swallow. Add to that a, pre a prejudicial bias amongst archaeologists against the historical credibility of the Bible, itself, by the way, an ancient document, and we go some way to understanding the misunderstanding rife in popular culture that the scriptures have been discredited. The truth is, even without role, the scriptures have proved remarkably reliable. Let me quote for you William F. Albright, a man known for his reputation as one of the great archaeologists. He says this, and I'll conclude with this statement. Albright says, the excessive scepticism shown toward the Bible by, his, by important historical schools of the 18th and 19th centuries, certain phases of which still appear periodically, has been progressively discredited. Discovery after discovery has established the accuracy of innumerable details and has brought increased recognition to the value of the Bible as a source of history. <laughs>